All right, here we are at Fantasy Football Now. It is Jeff Sidoff and my man, Chad Rink. They call me Tito. They call him Rink. How about that? Uh, I'm at that happens. He's at o- Chad Ocho Rico. Um, we are sitting here right now with the Fantasy Football Now. We're powered by Fans Free Sports with DSP Media. And follow us both on Twitter. we got a lot to get into today. And, Chad, I want to start out with the ADP trends. You've done a lot of drafts. I've done a couple. You've done more than I have. But what are you seeing, like, in the last couple of days as far as some movement for some guys, both positive and negative? Yeah, so I was I did a couple mocks while I was on the uh, bike at the Y today. So the biggest well, change. I know you're in shape. That's a humble brag. But go ahead. That's fine. So, exactly. I did mine while eating a Subway sub. But go ahead. That's that's good. I may have had one while I was on the bike. Who knows? <laughs> so um, the biggest the biggest switch over the last couple of days, it seems like Barkley and Chubb have flip-flopped. So Barkley had been going anywhere from five to eight. And then Chubb was usually end of the first, beginning of the second. They have not switched. I've seen Chubb going off the board four, five, six. And then now Barkley seems to be in that 10 to 13 range right now. All the other ones are about the same. It just depends on the, the league type. You still, just to run down the top real quick, it's, yeah. it's McCaffrey, Jefferson, top two almost always. Uh, and I agree with that. And then you get three, four, five in some order of Eckler, Chase, and then Kelsey. Te- Kelsey's going five, six, usually not later than seven on most of the drafts I've been on. So those are your, your three, four, five. And then six to 12, it's in any kind of order of Bijan, Taylor, now Chubb, Cup. Cup's usually six, seven. He's the third running a receiver off the board. And then you throw in uh, Tyreek's usually a first rounder. And then you get to that, that end where I've seen Pollard is in that range. Uh, I'm trying to think who else I had that written down, but that's that's kind of here looking at in those those top, and then um, coming back around in the, the the beginning of the second round, a lot of the running backs start going off along with Diggs. You know, Jacobs is there, Henry's there, now Barkley is there, and so you got Diggs, Lamb are usually that first first part of the second, and then the latter half of the second is is usually the younger younger receivers. You've got. Uh, A.J. Brown, who's not, I guess, not younger. Right. Sun God, Olave, Wilson right. are all kind of there. And then you sometimes will get, in the 12 team, you start getting maybe Mahomes end of the second. Uh, and that's kind of where you're sitting at. It's so interesting with, you get, like, there are ratings out there, rankings out there for different players, ADPs, different drafts. And then, but it's hard to find one that fits exactly to your scoring system. You know, there's PPR, half-point PPR, there's super flex, there's six-point passing touchdowns, it's redraft, it's dynasty, all these different things come into play. So whenever you're looking to do your draft, um, you know, make sure you have a good, a, a really good understanding of the rules. I Like, that's something that I'm probably anal about with the rules, like, because I'm a commissioner in a few leagues, and I try to make sure that every scenario is covered. But if you're a player in a league, you've got to know everything about your draft structure, your scoring points, all of that. You have to know all those things going in. And, you know, we talk about the, the CMC, Chris McCaffrey going really the first running back overall. I see Eckler a lot at two. I see Bijan Robinson a lot at three. And th- that's putting a lot of faith in a redraft league to take a rookie running back like Bijan Robinson is a third one off the board. I don't know if I would have that kind of faith in a redraft league to take him, but he's going like as a third running back. Does that surprise you? A little bit, but it's one of those where I think a lot of people, the shiny new toy, you know yeah. how good he is. You want to be the first guy to have him. I'm I'm kind of one of those guys, though. Um, if I was in um, like a high stakes league, I would probably not. I would yeah. go safer. Right. I, I'm telling you right now, in the Cincinnati League, the low hoop league down there, it, yeah. I'm taking him one i think yeah uh, but here's here's the interesting thing because i've been looking at it's like am i crazy if you look at uh algier and uh patterson last year where well, they're two main running backs right 
if you combine their fantasy scores that they had last year, and I know this is not, you can't just do that. Right. If you combine it, they had they they combined for 277 total fantasy points last year, according to Fantasy Pros. In a PPR league? Yeah. Okay. That would have put them number one. Oh, wow. Yeah, they, they just barely had a McCaffrey. Sure. So, obviously, they're still there. Bijan's better. Like, Patterson's over 30. I yeah, like Patterson's out here. On, on, yeah. on life support. Yeah. But if you look what they got, you know, they, they combined for 354 carries. And the, and the Falcons rushed the ball. They had the second highest percentage rushing plays last year just behind the Eagles. So, they're going to run the ball. They ran the ball the second most with those two jabronis. Now you bring in Bijan, right. who is supposed to be one of the elite guys coming out ever. So I think they're still going to run the ball, and that's that, I think that's the people that are drafting them like me are like, I kind of see that, and I think they've already started putting him in the passing game too. So I can see him having at least 45, 50 receptions easily. But redraft, I think it's more of if you're in more of a fun league or one that it's not a ton of money. Right. It's kind of fun to do that. If you're in a high stake series, like you're on the, you know, yeah, even though yeah. it, it's it's hard to draft him top five. I agree. Like that's what, yeah, that's the way I look at it too. When you look at the, and we've got a pretty good track record. Uh, they always talk every year about running backs in the first round as far as NFL, like regular football talk. You know, it's like running backs in the first round. No one does running backs in the first round. I went back and looked at the first four running backs drafted in, in recent years. 2018, it was Barkley, Penny, Sonny Michelle and Chubb. Now, uh, Michelle's been bad. It, it hit and miss, but mostly bad. Penny's had injuries. But Barkley and Chubb were both big-time hits as far as fantasy goes. 2019, it was Jacobs, Miles Sanders, Daryl Henderson, Henderson, and David Montgomery. Jacobs was a hit. I think Sanders was a hit. Uh, Henderson, eh. And then David Montgomery, I thought, was pretty good as well. 2020, you had uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Huge miss. And by the way, go to hell, Chad, for trading to me. But I don't... We're not doing it. I, I like got him from you. I got the draft pick. I traded him back to you and then took him again. That's and he again. sucked every time. But whatever. Anyway, it was Delaire. But after that, you had Swift. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, Cam Akers. And then Dobbins was fifth running back taken there, who's been fine other than injuries. Uh, 2021 was Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, Javante Williams, Trey Sermon, who way overdrafted. 2022 was Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker, James Cook, Rashad White. And this year you had Bajon Robinson, Gibbs, um, Zach uh, Charbonnet, and uh, Ty J. Spears. But my point was that anybody who's failed, other than Clyde Evans Alaire, and again, go to hell, Chad, but anybody who's been drafted, though, in that first four running backs, injuries have hurt them, but not, it hasn't been a performance thing. Like, it's like, not like they haven't performed well. It's just injuries of him. Yeah. And, and you look at it and, even Edwards Alaire had a he's had a decent, he wasn't great, but you're talking a pretty good probably over a fifty percent hit rate on those guys sure. going yeah. going the top four, especially first round. If you're looking first round yeah. as well. So he's there. I, it just it's just one of those things you have to just believe that the Falcons are just gonna run the ball and they're really just gonna go with him, giving mm-hmm. him two hundred and fifty carries, get him in the passing game. And yeah. then you've gotta also believe the Niners maybe not going to use McCaffrey as much as they should because they're looking playoffs and the Falcons probably aren't. Right. But it seems like the Falcons though, their, their identity now is run the ball. That's what they're going to do. And they don't have like an elite quarterback. Guy. They don't have some elite passing quarterback. They're going to have to run the ball to do anything, which sucks for Drake London owners and maybe Kyle Pitts owners as well, because they, you know, that's what the Falcons, they, they're going to run the ball. They're going to try to keep the ball for long periods of time and then hopefully have an elite defense. And they're going to hope to win some 17 to 16 games for the most part. But um, like the Bijan Robinson, I, in a redraft league, Chad, there's no way I'm taking the third running back. In a dynasty league, yes, I'd love to have it. But redraft leagues, I can't pull the trigger most of the time at that high. No, especially if you're doing, and again, we'll get into the, the ADP stuff where the, one of the main reasons you do ADP is to see if I draft a receiver, receiver. What do the running backs look like? That's really what you do. And and honestly, the running backs in rounds four through seven, eight, I like a lot better than most of the receivers. So it's it's smart to take a receiver if you can in the first round. And again, guys like Chase and Cup are probably better to take ahead of Bijan in a redraft league 
because you can get your running backs later on and the receivers just are kind of, you know, after the, the first 12, 15, it kind of just, just drops off. So it, I would, I wouldn't draft him that high, but I probably will. Okay. Let me ask you this then in a 12 team draft, I don't know where we're slotted. How many picks down will it be before you will take a running back first? Like if you're looking at it, what's the lowest possible, what's the high, I'm sorry, the highest possible spot you would be where you would say, I'm taking your running back first in a PPR league right now. I think it, it would be McCaffrey and Eckler, I think are still two, three. I think you take Jefferson okay. one McCaffrey Eckler, just because like Eckler had over a hundred receptions last year. I right. think McCaffrey had 80. So they're just like a receiver. So those three. And then I think you go chase cup. <sighs> And I, I did a Kelsey draft once as a 12 team. And I just, I right. hated the way the team, and I, I, he's like 35. I, at some point, um, he's got to tail off. I don't, here, here's my, here's my bold prediction. We can hit I later did. on is the chiefs are not making a playoff this year. That's my bold prediction. But anyway, that's a what? whole nother, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. Oh that's my just, God. We need to get the likes. So, um, <laughs> but Kelsey, Kelsey, like he, he's the top tight end. So even him, and then, so that gets you at six. So six right. is probably outside of Eckler. So like Taylor Bijan is usually six, seven, eight is where I like to sit. Cause I usually can get Bijan or Taylor there uh, and, and even cup too. And then you're still coming back around uh, early on in the second round to get, you know, who you want. And usually, you know, you can, you could grab whatever receiver you want, like Garrett Wilson, AJ Brown, those yeah. types of guys. There's a lot of real, like, there's a lot of receivers you could take. And it's that, I, like, I, I really think, although for years it was, a, you got to take running back, running back, first two picks, you got to do it. I'm at a point now in my life looking at this team, uh, looking at this draft, I'm sorry, looking at the players that are out there, that I, I think I can get great value in the third, fourth, and fifth round at running back. And I would love to take top wide receiver, top tight end, first two picks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I I don't even I would don't even mind going receiver, 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 depending where you're at, because Miles Sanders yeah. is falling early fourth. Like Damian Harris is usually like in the eighth round, seventh, eighth, ninth round. Right. And you know, um, you got the rookies coming out too. So, you know, Dalvin Cook's he's starting to slide up a little bit. Right. Camaras, Camaras late as well. So there are guys, and if you if you get three stud receivers. You know, Rashad, Rashad White's another guy I like too. He's usually going like fifth round as well. So, you know, you can piece together some decent running backs um, if you go receiver happy. Like I said, because then you get in the receivers later, like the, like the, you get Brandon Cook, um, like those types of guys where it's like right. you, you, you get a bunch of those guys. It's like, I don't know if they're going to hit or not. Yeah, it, it, it's gotten to the point where I think like in the last couple of years, I've been like, wait on a quarterback, wait on a quarterback because there's value later. I'm that way off running backs. Wait on a running back. Wait on a running back. There's value. Let me ask you this. If you're drafting today in a PPR league, redraft league PPR, uh, I tell you you can have either Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Bajan, or Dalvin Cook in a redraft league. Today you're drafting out of those four, rank them for me, for you. Uh, I would probably go, even with the, the holdout thing, Barkley one, okay, Bijan two, Jacobs three, Cook four only because I don't know where he's going. Right, uh, he yeah, could he I, could slide up to one even if he gets to the right. If he goes to the Chiefs, like who who knows? The Chiefs or um, Dolphins even? Yeah, the Dolphins too. Yeah, so yeah. I, Jacobs is the one. I'm just like I just think the Raiders could be bad. He looked good last year, but right. I, I have no problem with any of those guys, and they're all. Uh, it's it's kind of weird because Bijan is getting drafted the highest of all of them. Exactly. Um, Bark now now Barkley usually was before this this holdout talk. Barkley was almost always the third running back off before this was going on, right? Uh, and that kind of thing. But and then, but then Dalvin Cook obviously he's he's more now he's sliding up from like around the, the eighth round up to the sixth round now. I think people realize he's going to get signed somewhere. So and he's a talent. Out so, of those Jacobs, sports, yeah. is Barkley does Barkley have the highest upside through the highest ceiling or is it Cook in the right situation? I think Barkley because he's younger, and right. I, I just think he's better. Yeah. And you know, Brian Dable, it, I, the, I don't think the Giants are great, but Dable got him, in, you know, to the playoffs last year, and he knows how to, sure. to run an offense. And there's no one really behind Barkley, so 
you know, Cook going to the Dolphins, then, you know, we could talk, but they just still drafted A-Chain. They got Mostert, and I think uh, McDaniel's probably a guy that's not going to just give Cook, you know, 300 carries or even 250. So I think Barkley still is, is probably in, in the best situation. I agree with you on that. I think Barkley's one. I On the two, though, like all these guys for me are T2. Like I, Jacobs, yeah, I'm concerned because I think the Raiders aren't going to be good. Um, Bijan, because he's a rookie, and then Dalvin, depending on the situation he goes into. Now, now Dalvin's had injuries lately, too, which is why Alexander Mass was so valuable to the Vikings because of what – because Cook sometimes missed some games. Um, but I, I, I think, yeah, Barkley, if I'm drafting today, I'd take Barkley above the other guys. So, among second-year wide receivers, not named Olave or Garrett Wilson, because okay, let's take those two out of the mix. Who do you think will have the best fantasy season? Dotson in Washington, Watson in Green Bay, or Traylon Bur- Burks in Tennessee? I think if, uh, I think it's going to be Watson, uh, just because what he showed last year, right. and you know I know he's got the new quarterback with Love, but I think he's he's pretty talented in the way they they run that offense. Dotson's interesting, just but again, his quarterback situation is not great, and he's still right. technically the number two there. Where I think Watson is the the, the one, and then uh, I like Burks, but that that team's just not gonna throw the ball a ton. Right, and then they got they got Hopkins now. They're Hopkins so, now, yeah, yeah. I think I think I probably flip. I think I go Dotson one, Watson two. Dotson showed a lot down the stretch last year. Um, played really well in the last few games. And then, you know, obviously Christian Watson, yes, he had a great, he had a great look and, and did really well once he got going with uh, Green Bay. I'm not sure about Jordan Love, but I go probably Dotson, Watson, Burks next. Burks, yes, I'm with you on third on that one because the Hopkins ad and plus the fact that Ryan Tannehill, who I loved like three years ago, but now I hate. So I think that that's probably where I would go with that as well. Now, let's talk about the rookie wide receivers. Um, do you want Jordan Addison in Minnesota for this year as a one-year thing? I'm not talking 97, I'm talking redraft. Addison in Minnesota, who can drive fast. Uh, JSN in Seattle, Quentin Johnson with the Chargers, or Zay Flowers in Baltimore. How would you rank those four? Those four in a redraft, just strictly redraft. redraft it would yeah. be I, it would be Addison one, and okay. then I would probably put. Oh man, I love JSN. So do I, but I. I I, I just I, I think he, I think Quentin Johnson. Is probably two just because I think Mike yeah. Williams is going to get hurt. So, and, and so Keenan Allen. Yeah, exactly. So, so I think Keenan Johnson's hurt. two. I think JSN, I think I'd put three just because I think they'll use him in the slot. He, sure. he's, just, he's so good. And then I think Flowers just because he's in Baltimore. I like Flowers upside. I just wish he would have gone somewhere instead of Baltimore. I, I like your rankings on that. Now let's go with the Dynasty League. If you're in a Dynasty League right now, how would you rank them? If you got to, you know, you know, you're going to have them for the length of their careers. If you want them, how would you rank them in that scenario? That, that's a little bit different, just because I like. I think JSN one, even though mm-hmm. I don't know what their quarterback situation is going to be in the future. Right. Uh, and then I think I'd still go Addison too. I think just he's in a good situation with that team, and just you know, it, Jefferson's getting double coverage there. And then Johnson and then three, Johnson three, and Flowers four. I, look, I think that the the Seattle. Uh, situation for if, if Geno Smith falls flat on his face here and the Seahawks suck, they'll have a high draft pick where they can maybe grab another quarterback, which would improve JSN's value long term. If he's great, the JSN's value is still strong. So I think JSN's probably one, yes. I like I, the Addison Johnson thing is where it's weird for me for the dynasty thing because look, Kirk Cousins is not the long term quarterback in Minnesota. But they're going to you know what I mean? Like this, even this year, if they if they have a crap year this year, Chad, they what do they go nine and eight, eight and nine? You know yeah. what I mean? If that, that's a bad year for Minnesota. It's not enough to get Caleb Williams or Drake May or those guys up there at the top. So they're still going to be unless they go out and sign a free agent quarterback. They're still going to be in that iffy range as far as QBs go. If it's Cousins or somebody else, whatever. So that's my only knock on Addison. Like Addison got a ton of talent. I love Addison, but I just think it's going to depend on who they can get at quarterback at because the Kirk Cousins era is about to end. Yeah. Yeah. I I really didn't like any of the landing spots for these receivers for dynasty, just, just because of the quarterback situations on most of them, because they're older quarterbacks or they're just like Baltimore where, you know, they just don't throw it enough. So I was really not 
super, which is why in our our league I ended up with I had three yeah. three draft picks. I went Richardson at six, and then I right. ended up taking Charbonnet and, and Rashawn Johnson just because like I just didn't like any of the receivers. Um, I think that the Addison thing, I'm sorry, the, the JSN thing could be helped if Pete Carroll was ten years younger. Because I think he know, like I think Carroll's a great offensive mind. He yeah. can do it. But I also feel like what was he like seventy some years old now, right? Looks I know it looks like he's forty. Right. You, know, you and I both look way <laughs> older. <laughs> we do. Than he does. And so if he if I knew he was a coach there for another eight years, I'd feel much better about JSN. But I feel like Pete Carroll's got two or three years left, right, before either he dies or quits coaching. Right. Well, my, <laughs> so yeah, I, I think if you have those guys in any kind of dynasty league. You kind of see what happens this year, and then you try to sell high on them is what I would do right. for just draft picks for next year. It is so interesting with the differences between a dynasty league and a redraft league and how you approach things. And I, I'm in a dynasty league. I'm in a kind of an R league. It's like kind of a quasi-dynasty league, and I'm also in a redraft league. And so it's so interesting how different you view players based on that. And the running back thing, I know that – Eckler had like a Zoom meeting with all the running backs talking about it. And there was a story that came out about running backs maybe faking injuries or, you know, to help to boost, which I think would fail miserably because I think the problem really is running backs, Chad. Now, this is more general NFL talk than fantasy talk, but there are so many good running backs. And if you've got the right system, and if you've got a team that invests in your offensive line, it's like, I mean, look, the Broncos kind of started for me because when Terrell Davis got hurt, they brought in Mike Anderson, and he was great. And then Orlando's Gary, he was great. Didn't matter who the who the running back was, in that Mike Shanahan system, they were great. And it feels like almost any running back situation, I, I mean, Gus Edwards was as good as J.K. Dobbins. Now, they're both injuries and things like that, but it seems to me like, though, there are so many good running backs. It's so hard to invest in a running back, not only in the NFL, but also on the fantasy side because there's always someone better behind them. Yeah, exactly. And, it, it you know, I saw someone that, it tweeted something out, you know, about the reason why they don't deserve to get paid. You know, they're a dime a dozen. You can find a new one anytime. They're not doing anything we haven't seen 10,000 times before. They, they The more they produce, the worse they get, and they fall off after three years. And it's kind of true. And you, sure. like I said, you can just find somebody and you can plug and play. Now, obviously, certain guys are just elite, so it's going to be a little bit of a drop off. But if you have, like you said, if you have the good offensive line, the right system in play, they just look at what the Chiefs are doing. So right. you can just throw, throw guys in there. Yeah, seventh round pick. Outplays uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire, first round pick. Yep. Whereas Edwards Alaire is like on the verge of getting cut or whatever. Yeah, you and know, even whatever. McKinnon. McKinnon looked good, even when he was yeah, running the ball. Yeah. I know they use him in the passing game more, but they, they kind of just throw whoever they need in there because the system's so good. If you were starting a fantasy dynasty league today, Chad Rank, you're going to be the commissioner. Would you go to a system of one running back and then the offensive players after that? Like one running back, whatever receivers, offensive plays, or would you still stick to the two running back option? I think I would do one. One running back. I just think it gives teams more flexibility. And then you can decide to go crazy on receivers and, right. and just, just load up on there. I'd still do, I think, probably one running back, two receivers. I'd probably still throw a tight end in. I think Dynasty is just yeah, That's just a hard thing, that. too, with the tight end thing, though. Because- it, it's just gotten so weird because there's just always been, like, that top core of, like, three and right. then everybody else. That's the part that's hard about it for me when I look at it. And, and, and you look at fantasy leagues, but, like, it's, it's Kelsey, right? And then there's a drop off. Then it's like Kittle and Andrews, mm-hmm. and then maybe Pitts, but who knows in Atlanta? But there's a drop off there, and I wonder. You know, Jimmy Graham famously was the one who wanted, uh, as a tight end, wanted to be classified as a receiver because of the money and the cap if they did like the franchise tag. Um, but like I, I feel like now I'm gonna. If I was starting a league today, I would probably say the one running back, and I would not require a tight end. I would say that you can. If you want to draft a tight end, great. Put him in the OP offensive player slot, whatever it is. Yeah. Flex the flex. How you're going to do it? But I don't. I, God, I don't think I would require a tight end just because I don't. It, it, let's say it's a ten team league. I don't think there's ten starting tight ends that I would want to have in fantasy. 
No, no. I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I never, I usually never spend a high pick on a tight end, right? Just because it just, I don't like the way that the, the team build ends up being. So I'm, I'm probably the same way too. And when it came down to it, I'm like, and like I said, the one that we've down down in Cincinnati, we've done for like 20 years, we've never had to draft a, a tight end in that league. You just, it, it's, it's more of a best ball feel. You draft sure. two quarterbacks, three running backs, five receivers, and you get your best one, two, and three. And then you have a, a huge bench because we don't even do waiver wires uh, during the season at all or trades. Are you a fan of the no kicker, no defense kind of draft in a, in a regular league where you get got like, PPR, you know, all kinds of things? Are you, are you a fan of – there's some people that will say, I'm not drafting a kicker, I'll just pick one up every week. There's some that say, I'm not going to draft a defense, I'll just pick one up every week and rotate it. Are you a fan of either of those concepts as a fantasy owner? I hate the team defense. It's such a crap. Like you, you never know. And it's all, it's all based on like touchdowns. The team gets two weird touchdowns. And yeah. So defense, you know, my love of kickers. Yeah. You know? So I, I don't mind. I don't mind the kickers uh, just because there's some extra, extra points in there. If you get a guy that gets four field goals, it you right. know, could, could help you out. That's why I love, I love our scoring system in our league. It's just such a, a, a great system where the points is just kind of that separate thing. But if they did away with kickers, I wouldn't mind because that's DFS does that. I hate that the fact that DFS does the defense, I'd rather just see him having the kickers or just do none right. uh, for defense. So I have no problem. And I think eventually it might get to that because like we do, we do individual, the IDP league is the one we do down in Cincinnati. We've done it for the entire 28 years. And I like that because you get to actually draft guys and then you're kind of right. rooting for a guy rather than just, hey, my defense scored. I'm like, well, who scored? I don't know. Well, okay. In your IDP league, is it how many IDPs do you start? You, you do 10. So you just, you draft 10. You got to have three D line, three linebackers, three okay. secondary, and a wild card. And you just get all 10 start. And then you just, and it's just a total points league. There's not head to head. So it, we play all all 18 weeks now. And it's just total points. It's very touchdown heavy scoring. So like ours, quarterbacks, you get a point for 50 yards, rushing, receiving is 25. So I remember one one year I had Peterson, he had like 183 yards rushing, no touchdowns. And, and my son was like, oh, that's great. I was like, yeah, not in this league. It was like, eight. <laughs> it was seven points. He got right. me seven points for rushing for 183 yards. And then some other guy, you know, did his like two touchdowns on five carries and like 18 yards and outscored him. So, um, but you know that going in there. So you just try to, you know, it's fun that way. It's just a little, that's why I love the three that I'm, the three main ones I'm in are, I like because of they're all different types and they're all right. different scoring. So my buddy Adam Kahn does an IDP league also, but the way they do it is um, you got to start at 11. So okay. you've got to start, you know, four different, three, if you have to say it, three, four, four, three defense. What are you okay. playing? And you got to start the, and then you got defensive backs also. You also start punters, kickers, punt returners, oh, wow. kick returners. Now, and their league also wow. goes all the way through to the Super Bowl as far as who determines the championship. Okay. So you'll see guys sometimes in like week 12 and they've got a quarterback who is going to be in the playoff but sucks. Uh, we'll say Garoppolo there. Um, and so, you know, the Raiders are going to the playoffs, so you want to get Garoppolo. If you're willing to give up, you know, uh, Kyler Murray, or you're willing to give up, like, you know, um, I'm trying to think of another quarterback who might miss, maybe it's Pickett in Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know, they're not going to make the playoffs. You might over overspend for somebody knowing that because you get points through the playoffs. It accumulates through that. You might see guys making moves for linebackers that are going to be a playoff team for a running back who's great but won't be in the playoffs. And then so they go all the way through. But, yeah, you've got to – they have a massive, like a 46 round draft every year. Yeah, it's like ours is 32 because, like I said, we've never done. Um, and this is this is boring the audience, the you know 20 people we see because that's the one thing people people <laughs> no, hate. No, people hate like when we talk about, about this. Start a league if you want to do it. You want to start a league? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, IDP is the way to go. It, it's I I love it. And then just you just it's easy to find the scoring system. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 one of those things. So we do 32, and you know. We, you know, we have two kickers and stuff. And right. then we, we've never, we, the first year we had, the, the first years we had pickups. And then, um, so like most of the guys have been in this league the entire time. So the one guy, it was, uh, my buddy Schwartz, his brother Lou, uh, who was a little bit older, he was a couple years older than us, but all of us went to high school together, but all, right. most everyone in the league. So his, his first year in the league, this is how long we've done it. He drafted, uh, Cody Carlson, quarterback for the, the Oilers. 
And, uh, <laughs> you know, and his, his team Oilers was bad. Yeah. yeah, his team was bad. And then he made a couple nice pickups. I think this is Bledsoe's rookie. Or Bledsoe had a good, so, and he won the league that first year because he picked up guys. And if you know the commissioner, my commissioner, my buddy Dave, he's like, screw this. Not, we're not doing this anymore. You right. got to draft. Well. He, he's just like, you got to draft well and, and stuff like that. He still does like all the stats by hand um, and everything like that. So it, it's fun. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a whole event too. We do, we go to the Reds game on Friday. Uh, we usually do some sort of, we don't do sports now because they're all old, but we'll do some sort of thing event right. on Saturday, have a set, draft Saturday. There's like, there's always a theme to the draft. He's got a soundtrack that's based on a theme. He's got the software. He puts our pictures up when it's our turn. It's, it's a whole big thing. It's really the only time that all of us get to hang out together that's too, great. which has been fun. Yeah. Cause we've been friends since like the late eighties. So. See, Adams, the guy I told you about his thing is they go and they do like golf one day and they draft all night and they do all that. Yeah. I, I, that's a great part of all this, uh, the aspect of fantasy football, that you can do those kinds of things with your buddies and get together. I mean, we do it all with, with our draft out at, out at the Swamp House. We do that yeah. as well. Yeah, when I started, when I first started playing this one format that you and I played in, Chad, um, Aaron Portsline, longtime yeah. representative of Blue Jackets, was the commissioner. And we had to pay our league dues plus postage because he would do it by hand also right. and you get something in the mail that would say this is your result this week this is you know this is what it is so we had to pay post yeah. that you would mail it out to us every time uh which is very fun as well but that you yeah. know, it's evolved so much but and I, I know that we can do drafts now remotely and so where guys yes. can be all over the country and do it but getting together is the most fun um i don't hardly you know we have most of us are local but um which is fun getting together and doing all this yeah. Make an event, have fun with it, do all those things, you know. And so, um, yeah, that's what's cool about this, though. But uh, yeah, because that's the that's the best part of the fantasy football season is the draft because you're all getting yeah. together. It's fun just busting each other's chops on picks and that kind of thing, you know. And then you always have the hope of okay, this team if this happens, this happens, this happens, this could be good. And right. you know, you you have the hopes of winning, and then it just you know. It, it's still fun the rest of the way, but the draft is just the best. Best. I've hated missing the draft up there at the swamp the last couple of years. I was putting a fence in last year, and I was drafting yours and my church league at the same time. And it's like it was crazy. Try to do that's that. A, that, that that's a, yeah, you get, look, I don't care where you're at. Get together for the draft. Just yeah, get together. Exactly. Have fun. Yep. No offense, Chad, but be there this year. I am. Um, my plan yeah, is. is it, I'll get. I'll get to you afterwards if that's the if the, the date that you had on there before. The date, is, yeah. Okay, I'll put it on a calendar, so it'll be good. And if you have problems with draft, by the way, fantasydraftproxy dot com. You can look at that website. We can draft for you. Also, I do that. I, I probably did fifty drafts last year for people, and I help run teams for other people as well. Always a lot of fun. But you can go there. Uh, we have a, a real good stable of. Uh, drafters that can do that. Uh, the Temple of Doom actually participates in that as well, Chad. So uh, all of that. But I can't wait. Look, I wait as long as you can to do your draft. Go as late into the preseason as you can. It's like, you know, I, I know some people want to draft now. I wouldn't want to draft now, but wait as long as you can. So you get all the intel on what's going on. Injuries out of the way. I know like Naheem Hines, not that he was high in anyone's list. He's out for the year now, though, because of a, a jet ski accident. Where it wasn't even his fault. Like he was just sitting on his jet ski and someone rammed into him. He's out for the year for the uh, for the Bills. But let me ask you one more question about the Bills now before we go before we uh, cut this off. But okay. where are you at on James Cook? I I prefer Damian Harris. I, I think Cooks is a talent. But I think he's still going to end up being that scat back third down guy, two minute right. drill. I think I, they got Damian Harris. I liked him in New England. I I traded for him last year hoping he'd get traded last year in a dice right. league and he never did. So I think, I, I think he's going to get the goal line, get the bulk of the carries. Uh, so I like, I like Damian Harris better than cook. Although cook has value if something happens to Harris too, because that, that offense, but I would, I'd rather have Harris. Isn't it funny? Like I, I love James cook, but I love him because he's on my team in dynasty leagues. <laughs> right. so I'm, I'm clouded. So I, you said that you, you, you gave the right answer as a non James cook owner. My answer would be yes. It's going to be great this year because I own James cook. It's completely fine. Right. Uh, but Chad, thanks so much, buddy. Let's do this again soon. I am at it happens. He is at Chad Ocho Rico. We'll do this again sometimes in space football. Now we'll get back to you very soon with more ADP trends and what's going on in fantasy football. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate it.